Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining Tour Radar and uh, Queensland on our destination spotlight today. So my name is Caitlin Duggan, and I am the Director of Business Development for Tour Radar. So just to kick things off, I just wanted to go through a couple of housekeeping items before I pass it over uh, to Laura and Luke from Queensland to showcase all the amazing reasons why you should go uh, visit this destination. Um, if you guys are new to GoToWebinar, there are a couple areas where you can either ask questions or there's also a chat function. So you will see in the control panel the question section. So throughout today's uh, webinar, you can ask uh, any questions and me and uh, Raul from to a radar, we'll be monitoring and helping to answer any of these questions. Um, and there is also the chat function down at the very bottom as well. So feel free uh, to chat anything in there as well. Um, so I know we all have 30 minutes and as you guys can imagine, there's lots to talk about and lots of great reasons why you guys should be visiting Queensland yourself, but also sending um, your customers to Queensland on some tours. So I'm going to pass it over to Laura uh, to kick things off. Let me do that. There, cool. Laura, it's heading your way. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks to Tour Radar for having us today. Um, really exciting to be joining you. And I just wanted to start with some words to acknowledge the traditional owners of country and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters, culture and community and pay our respects to elders past, present and future. This is certainly true for our Indigenous Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia, but also the elders owning the country that we're all sitting on today as we come together from all over the world. So my name is Laura Jones. I'm your country manager for the Americas. Um, certainly not to say you can't reach out if you happen to be sitting in another location today. I'm based out of New York and love hearing from you, love getting questions about itinerary planning. So my email's right there on screen um, and we can follow up later as well. And before I hand over to my colleague, Luke, I just wanna give you a why, why Queensland pitch. I mean, if you're not familiar with Queensland, we op occupy the northeast corner of Australia, pretty big country, pretty big state. Um, and we, we call ourselves the Sunshine State. So you're looking at 300 plus days of sunshine. We're the home to the Great Barrier Reef, incredibly rich indigenous culture that every visitor will get to experience and an absolute abundance of nature and wildlife all in the beautiful state of Queensland. Um, getting your clients to Queensland, we wanted to draw attention to some of our non-stop flight routes. So we fly from Air Can on Air Canada from Vancouver, United Airlines from San Francisco, and Qantas from Los Angeles. Every day of the week, there is a flight leaving the US to Queensland and, th and four times weekly from Vancouver. Um, and with that being said, I'm gonna hand over to my colleague, Luke, um, to talk a little bit about the beautiful region of Brisbane. Well, good day, everyone. Uh, thanks for the intro, Laura. Uh, my name's Luke Jones, and I am uh, based in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I am the representative for, for Brisbane and Brisbane marketing in the Brisbane region and in uh, the United States and Canada. So thank you very much for joining us today. So, um, Laura gave a really good introduction into why Queensland. Um, this is a bit of a history lesson for those uh, Americans out there. Um, Brisbane has a really great connection with uh, with the United States that dates back um, into into uh, World War II times, where this gentleman here, you might recognise him, General Douglas MacArthur, was actually stationed in Brisbane, and uh, he's one of our very first long-term tourists. This is his building, and it's called MacArthur's Chambers, and it's right in the centre of Brisbane. Um, now it's actually a museum. Uh, uh, called the MacArthur Chambers Museum, and actually we've preserved his office and everything in there. And uh, so you can visit that and get a bit of a history lesson. So it wasn't just General MacArthur that was uh, stationed in Brisbane. He had with him um, 300,000 of his troops. Um, so we had 300,000 strapping young American uh, troops stationed in Brisbane. To give you an idea of how many that was, the population of Brisbane at the time with Australians was only around 100,000. So uh, it really was an occupied city in a very friendly sense. And uh, so with 300,000 uh, Americans and 100,000 Aussies, you can imagine what went on there. Um, these gentlemen were very, very popular. And uh, a lot of the local ladies took a shine and fell in love and uh, got married. So this is a really interesting part of our history, our shared history. Uh, there were so many weddings going on. The Queensland government had to set up a war, a war bride's office 
and they were doing 16 weddings a day uh, throughout wartime um, period. So you can imagine how many Americans and Aussies got married. And, and for that reason, there's a wonderful connection between Brisbane and uh, the United States that exists to this day for many thousands of Americans and Australians. Fast forward to modern days, uh, Brisbane is good to go. Uh, fully open, a really modern metropolis, subtropical climate. Um, Laura mentioned the weather, it's actually the sunniest capital city of any um, city in Australia. And what you can see from this picture here is this beautiful river, the Brisbane River winding right through the middle of the city, which gives it a really beautiful uh, indoor outdoor aspect. You'll see all the locals out on the, on the water and uh, enjoying uh, the wonderful weather year round. This is Brisbane International Airport. Um, it is the fastest way to get into Australia from the United States. We've just put a second runway in and it's the fastest way to get throughout Australia. Um, it's won a number of awards, including um, conservation and sustainability awards. Here you can see Brisbane here in, re in reference to the rest of Australia. So if you're flying from the United States, from that Los Angeles, San Francisco, or if, if you're flying from Canada, from uh, Vancouver, Brisbane is technically the fastest way to get into Australia. So what we recommend is you, you land your clients in Brisbane, spend a two or three nights getting over your jet lag and exploring the wonderful things to do in the region and then go on with, to your next destination, be it Uluru, Ayers Rock, Sydney, um, up the reef, Cairns, or down to Melbourne, et cetera, and then fly out to another gateway. So it, it's uh, it's probably the most relaxed airport you're gonna see in Australia. You can be um, landing and then out of the terminal within 15 to 20 minutes uh, with your luggage on your way or hopefully enjoying a few nights in Brisbane. So Brisbane is known as Australia's city with the biggest backyard. And uh, there's just so many things that are really accessible within 30 minutes to 60 minutes of the actual city. So uh, within 30 minutes, you have koala or nature experience, winery, you've got, you've got the bays. Within 60 minutes, you've got world heritage listed, rainforests, um, fresh produce, adventure type of experiences, and it's all really accessible. So a good two or three days in, Brisbane, um, you can use it as a base of operations to really explore these um, uh, different regions. I mentioned the weather, this is literally what it looks like. Um, it really is uh, just a beautiful climate. Uh, a lot of rooftop uh, bars and, and pools and restaurants, all the hotels, the new hotels that have gone up. Uh, we've got 20 new hotels being built since 2014, lots of new five-star and four-star options. I'll show you those in a little minute in a minute here. Just a shot of the river here from Kangaroo Point Cliffs. It really is a beautiful picturesque city. It's got a very modern cheerful vibe to it, but it's still got a sort of a country town feel when you meet the locals and they hear, particularly an American accent, they're really excited to see and probably will buy you a beer at one of the many alfresco options, dining options and beer drinking options. Here's Mr. Percival's and Howard Smith Wars. Howard Smith Wars is one of our main hubs for um, food and wine experiences and drinking experiences, uh, great restaurants. We've got the only overwater brewery in Australia. It's called Felon's Brewery, and it's right on Howard Smith Wharves here. It's a very active city. The locals are always out enjoying um, the river life, and uh, you can rent bikes. Your clients can rent bikes and do it as well, and also many different types of experiences depending on your comfort level with adventure. Kayaking the Brisbane River is a super cool thing to do. Miramar Cruises operates the uh, the river boats that go up and down, and they can do um, you know day trips out to the islands, and they also do up uh, you know can do various stops throughout the city. Story Bridge is our bridge that crosses the river, and you can do an adventure climb, go up there and with a guide and get a history of of Brisbane City and the and the region, which is very very fascinating, right back to Aboriginal days uh, before the colonial settlement there. Um, if you're a little bit more adventurous, you can actually climb up Gam Kangaroo uh, Point Cliffs here, as this uh, lady's doing. Um, Emporium Hotel. So this is one of the classic views you're going to get in Brisbane, uh, a rooftop pool. Uh, the Emporium is one of our newer hotels, five-star hotel, uh, restaurant there. The whole roof opens up at night so you can see the stars and it really lets in the wonderful climate and the night air. Um, and this, it's not the only hotel that has this sort of experience. Most of our hotels along the river will have some sort of terrace or outdoor um, dining option or bar. So here's just a few examples of our rooftop experiences. Microbreweries, um, Brisbane actually has around 20 different breweries and one of our most famous, I mentioned Felons, is the Overwater Brewery at Howard Smith Wharves and it's really huge in there. You can see in that top right picture, everyone, uh, um, it's not, it's, I can tell you it's way more busy than this. Uh, this is a, it's a, a promotional spot, but you can see those giant vats of beer that have been brewed there and over 30 different types of um, local microbrew uh, beer from Felons there. So if you've got a client who's a beer lover, um, this is definitely the place to send them. 
cuisine, look, the cuisine in Australia is excellent and Brisbane is no exception. And Brisbane has a really good uh, seafood food, uh, influence and Southeast Asia influence given our location. So a lot of variety um, cuisine there. Aboriginal culture, uh, you can't go to Australia without experiencing some of the indigenous culture there. Uh, the Aboriginal people, uh, the traditional owners of the land um, of Australia, as, as Laura mentioned in the start of this presentation, um, and all the different tribes are spread throughout the Australia. In Brisbane, the, the local tribe is known as the Terrible Tribe, and they are um, actually uh, have their own ex uh, experience, which is called Spur of the Red Sands. And this gives you a bit of a um, theatre performance, a progressive theatre performance, which um, goes throughout the evening, followed by a dinner. And this is in Benley, and it's only about um, probably 30, 30 to 40 minutes away from the centre of the city that you can actually uh, have this experience. So do, do think about including this for your clients. The indigenous culture of Australia is probably 60 to 70,000 years old, they believe, or even older, which is the oldest continuous living culture in the world. Yeah. All right, so um, out into the scenic rim. This is a, a, a really uh, undiscovered gem of, of Brisbane. This is only 60 minutes away from the center of the city. You wouldn't believe it because it's just so pristine and, and um, unpopulated. Uh, World Heritage listed rainforest area. And uh, this has been named Lonely Planet's top 10 places in the world to see in um, 2021 last year. And that's the only place in Australia that made Lonely Planet's top 10. Uh, so you can see how special this place is. And, uh, and like I said, it's very accessible, only about 60 minutes by transfer, uh, car transfer out there from, the, from your hotel in, in Brisbane. Hiking, uh, there's all kinds of activities out there. We have floating images, hot air ballooning, great way to see the hinterland uh, first thing in the morning with a champagne breakfast over the beautiful landscape. We've even got a camel farm out there where you can ride camels and, and, and sample different camel products such as uh, camel cheeses, which sounds very interesting. Uh, different types of accommodation out here. This is uh, Spices Retreat's Great Walk, so very eco-oriented. There's many types of accommodation out there from small little uh, cottages, bed and breakfasts, up to more uh, recognised brands. Only about 30 minutes out of Brisbane is Surame Winery. Yes, we do have our own winery, and this is a very well-respected and well-awarded uh, winery of Brisbane. Brisbane is really known as a beer drinking uh, hub, but also we have the great wineries. We have this, we also have City Winery, which is right in the middle of Brisbane. And you can literally you know, walk out of your hotel and 10 minutes down to City Winery and have a wine tasting cellar door experience right in the, in the city. Surame is really cool because they have their own accommodation out there too. So you can stay the night uh, after having a, an extended wine tasting session. Uh, might be uh, uh, appealing. Heading the other way out into the islands, um, you can get a, a river transfer, a river cat uh, or ferry transfer straight out to Morton Island, Morton Bay Island, which is only about an hour transfer by boat. And uh, this will take you out into Tangaloom Island Resort on Morton Island and North Redbroke Island. You can see in the top right here, this is the, actually the best place in Australia to do whale watching from the land, given the, the geography and the height of the island and the depth of the water around it. It's great for land-based whale watching, plus other natural attractions you can see here. Pangaluma Island Resort is a, is a must-do experience. You can go out there for a day trip, uh, beautiful sugary white sand, tons of different activities, great accommodation. Um, you can stay a couple, a couple of nights or just go out for the day. Uh, lots of a animal interaction and soft adventure, quad biking, helicopter rides, and Sand tobogganing, this is a must do for families and, and uh, more adventurous people, real fun activity. Just getting back into the city itself. So this is a shot of Howard Smith Wars, actually. This is the hub I was telling you about where all the locals will hang out on a, on a uh, Friday and Saturday night or even a Thursday night. And here you have the Crystal Book right behind, which is one of our five star hotels and the Story Bridge. And um, the city itself is a walking city. You can get around it, you know, 10, 15 minutes into these different precincts. By precinct, we mean different themed areas, like there's the arts precinct, the dining precinct, the shopping precinct, um, the, the, the cultural uh, precinct. And you can get a, a city cat boat, um, little ferry that goes up and down just to take you to different places, or you can walk around. So very accessible and it's fun just going up and down on the, on the water taxis. Here's just a bit of a, a grabbable, a different experience in terms of the precincts. Fish Lane is kind of the old area of, of uh, Brisbane. And then we have uh, each street uh, where all the entertainment is, James Street where all the uh, shopping is. 
CBD, Central Business District, a lot of activities, including walking tours, and then you'll find MacArthur's Chambers Museum there as well, a lot of history. Always something interesting going on at the Gallery of Modern Art, South Bank. Uh, we do have the Big Five in Brisbane um, in terms of a ex exhibition here. Uh, but we also have tons of Aboriginal um, uh, art exhibits and there's a great Aboriginal walking tour called Black Card Cultural Tour, which will take you through all the, um, the street art that's done by local Aboriginal artists um, on the terrible people. Uh, one of our, our key selling points of Brisbane is actually Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. And this is a world-class animal uh, interaction experience. It's the oldest, largest koala sanctuary in Australia and it's right on the river in uh, it's uh, 15 minutes or so um, out of the centre of Brisbane, an easy transfer um, from your hotel. In fact, you can do a Miramar cruise, cruise and koala experience. They'll take you right up to the jetty at the koala sanctuary. Um, so big open area where you can feed kangaroos and, and, and they're all in the open and get photos with koalas. Also able to cuddle a koala here if you so wish. Just quickly on accommodation, uh, Brisbane's really gone from strength to strength with their accommodation options. And, if you're selling Australia, one thing you might encounter in high season that can be um, a little bit tricky uh, to get uh, really good accommodation in some of the capital cities, especially over Christmas and New Year. Brisbane's still great. We've got we've got really uh, great availability, five star product, really affordable, good value. Here's some examples of Crystal Brook I mentioned, which is right under the Story Bridge, uh, awesome location right in Howard Smith Wharves. There, the Carlisle Hotel. This is kind of like Miami chic, five star hotel, and then you have some more of the international brands um, that you might be aware of um, as well. Some shots here, the Carlisle Interior. This is a very funky hotel. W Hotel, I love uh, their outdoor uh, terrace. Uh, great place to have a drink and watch the sun go down over the city. It's right on the river. Crystal Brook, as I mentioned, um, under the bridge. Hyatt Regency, amazing pool. Got some really good apartment style accommodations as well and uh, boutique hotels. Um, so, you know, uh, one and two bedroom apartments uh, for families or people who want a bit more room. Uh, Overlow Hotel, this is one of our new hotels, very funky um, in the Fortitude Valley here. That's right in the city. And lastly, what's happening, uh, there's more development going on. This is Queen's Wharf Precinct, and this is opening uh, in the next few months. It's been under construction for the last five years, and it's having its grand opening. It's four hotels, uh, the ritz Palton, it's uh, Rosewood and the Star Brisbane. And I forget the last one, but it's over a thousand rooms and all five star with this big open area in the middle, which has over a hundred different outlets and uh, eateries, outdoor theater. So this is going to be a real hub for the locals and visitors to come and gather. The big walkway along the top has really commanding views across the river and the city and connects all the different hotels. Dorset is the last hotel there, sorry, slipped my mind. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. So uh, Brisbane is going from strength to strength. And um, like I say, it's an awesome place to start your Aussie vacation, uh, get over your jet lag and meet locals who still have a, a you know, a real sort of country friendliness about them and a, a genuine cultural experience in Australia. And uh, keep an eye on the city. Uh, there's going to be more and more infrastructure and development going on as we head towards our um, Olympics. We've been chosen to host the Olympics in 2032 after Los Angeles. Uh, so that takes a lot of gearing up an investment. So Brisbane really is stepping up onto the world stage as a international destination. All right, that concludes my section. I'm gonna um, hand back to, to Laura. Thank you, sir. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to move a little bit further around Queensland. Uh, Luke's given you all the tremendous reasons to start in our shining capital city of Brisbane. And a lot of the tours that you'll find with Queensland on the Tour Radar, tour radar platform do actually start in Brisbane. So it's the perfect FIT edition um, when you're looking at those independent or group journeys through Tour Radar and then your guests or your clients rather can go on and explore the rest of the state. So. Brisbane's kind of Brisbane, sorry, Queensland is broken down into a lot of different regions. We're only going to focus on a few today, um, really covering off where the tours available on Tour Radar go to and also some of the more popular destinations for international travellers. Um, a little bit of a shift and unusual for us as Queensland is to start talking about the outback. The reason I wanted to do this is there's an incredible AAT Kings tour available on Tour Radar from Brisbane out to outback Queensland. And although we've got beautiful beaches and coral reefs, 
we also have a whole lot of outback out there in Queensland. So outback, outback Queensland is the home of Qantas Airlines out in Longreach. It's where the airline was developed. Um, it's dinosaur country, which is phenomenal. Like you don't often associate dinosaurs and, and Australia, um, but it's where some of the largest uh, collection of fossils and um, dinosaur remnants, let's say. Um, have been discovered and it's also a really cool place to get that like outback Aussie feel. So there is a five day tour with A to Kings that can be taken straight from Brisbane, get your clients into Brisbane, out on that A to Kings tour and then back to explore the rest of Queensland. Um, a really popular oh, itinerary and there's quite a few Sorry, Laura, just, I don't think do. slides are changing. Um, just wanted to jump oh. in there. Yeah, I, we can just, we see the Australia starts with Queensland. Um, oh no. <laughs> I, is anything jumping for you now? No, we still see the Australia starts with Queen, Queensland one. Let's try this again. Sorry, everybody. No worries. Does that feel a bit better? No, <laughs> if you well, go into like, my toolbar and all. No, oh, there. I, now I see Outback Queensland. Yeah, I apologize, everybody. I think I'm really delayed. So let's just try this one more time. Okay, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Now I see Outback Queensland. Okay, you are seeing my toolbar with all my embarrassing icons yeah. open. So apologies about that as well. Um, anyway, so we're talking about Outback Queensland, so here are some beautiful images to go with. Um, you're seeing some of uh, the Outback accommodations and also the, the stunning landscapes available out there. And then as we move on north from Brisbane, which is a really popular itinerary to kind of go up the coast, we hit some various uh, regions and beaches areas. So starting with what we call the Sunshine Coast, it's your absolute picturesque white sand beaches, beautiful blue waters. This is where Australians choose to come on vacation. Um, and a really popular region is Noosa. There's quite a few tours that actually go through Noosa, which is really cool. Noosa is like, if you're familiar with Australia and um, the idea of like, um, Byron Bay. It's like Byron Bay 2.0. It's kind of where the rich and famous of Australia come to vacation and this is why. Gorgeous scenery, cool shopping, you're out in like farmlands within minutes um, and there's a whole lot of boutique accommodations there as well and certainly lots of fabulous properties are included on those tours with Tour Radar. It's also the home to Australia Zoo, well famous Australia Zoo. So this is like only an hour and ten out of Brisbane so it's super close. Um, the home of the Irwin family. If you've not yet met Bob Irwin he's the youngest of the Irwins and he's looking an awful lot like Steve there and certainly following in his footsteps to do a lot of promotion about um, wildlife rehabilitation and all the amazing programs that go on at Australia Zoo. Um, Journeying up north a little bit further, drawing attention to our beautiful Fraser Coast. This is the home to Gary Fraser Island. Um, you might be familiar with the name Fraser Island. Uh, Australia has gone through uh, extensive steps over the past few years to hand back and rename many of our um, areas to their to their traditional Indigenous names. So Fraser Island, now known as Gary, uh, spelt with a K but pronounced with a G. Um, and this is the world's largest sand island. It's also the largest concentration and population of dingoes. Um, I know that sounds might sound intimidating, but they're adorable. They're very passive. There's nothing to worry about, but you get these beautiful um, crystal clear waters on white sand beaches. Uh, you can drive a car along the beach. Um, it's just a really, really cool, unique place. And there's actually quite a few walking tours available on Tour Radar of Gari, so certainly something to check out if you have walking enthusiasts. This is also the main region uh, for Harvey Bay. Harvey Bay is really, really famous for our whale population. So July through November, um, Harvey Bay, which is the area in between Gari and the mainland, is where um, these humpback whales come to have their babies. So that whole stretch of time, it's uncommon not to see a mother and calf together, which is just the most 
amazing site. Again, a lot of the itineraries you'll be looking at on Tour Radar do ex include this experience over that time, but certainly an absolute cannot miss when going through Harvey Bay. And then we head up a little bit further north to an area called the Whitsundays. Uh, you might be well familiar with this stunning picture of Hart Reef. Um, if you happen to have caught the uh, recent Julia Roberts, George Clooney film, Ticket to Paradise, you might be shocked to know that it was number one all filmed in Queensland um, and two very largely focused on the Whitsundays and on Hamilton Island specifically, which is kind of crazy given the film is pitched to be Indonesia. Um, but the Whitsundays is a collection of 74 islands plus mainland based experiences and this is kind of our stunning postcard picture. What you're seeing here is beautiful white sand kind of islands and um, what do you call them, causeways, but the tide is different every day. So you will never get the same picture of this region of Queensland twice, because the next day you come back and the tides shifted and the sands have shifted. Um, and it's just a very, very magical place to experience. Oh, and it's a video. <laughs> Let's move on, wasn't aware of that. Um, and one of the regions I talked about, it's where Ticket to Paradise was actually uh, filmed for majority, is Hamilton Island. Again, it's on a lot of those itineraries and a really tremendous location for people wanting to incorporate an island stay. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of an additional plug to a new experience, it's kind of fancy, only available from Hamilton Island, but this is called Journey to the Heart of the Reef, and this is actually the only tour that will take you to Heart Reef, so that picture postcard, crop of corals in the shape of a heart out on the Great Barrier Reef. It's maximum six people, you head out on a 30 minute helicopter ride, you go over those beautiful shifting dunes um, of White Beach in the Whitsundays, you land on this cool pontoon, um, you do a glass bottom boat tour, you do snorkeling, and it's just super iconic. So if you're looking at any of these tours that do have Hamilton Island, and your clients are wanting a little bit of a treat or a little bit of something different within there, um, certainly talk to your tour operator about adding this experience in, because you pretty much can't book it when you're there, because you're there, it's so popular and so limited. Another option if guests are going through Airlie Beach or want something a little bit different if you're adding FIT to those tour components is Australia's first or South Pacific's first underwater hotel. Um, it's Reef Suites. If anybody's had a chance to see the new Zac Efron uh, documentary on Netflix, you'll see he stays here. Um, it's located on Reef World and you go out during the day, you have your uh, Great Barrier Reef experience and then the main guests go back to the well, main guests, the primary group of guests go back to the mainland and then a small group of guests stay on overnight to either stay in an underwater room or one of these cool tents on the top. It's like the most iconic experience um, that, that we can truly offer right there on the Great Barrier Reef. So something to really consider. Um, I wanted to quickly reference Townsville. A lot of the tours that you will look at on the Queensland itineraries do go through Townsville. Townsville is very cool. It's essentially the home of Great Barrier Reef science and conservation in Queensland, in Australia, and maybe even the leading in the world. Um, so they have a marine museum there. Again, if you watch that Netflix documentary, episode three maybe, um, Zac Efron goes out here, he learns about Great Barrier Reef Conservation. Um, it provides an amazing overview of reef health, um, of where we are with the situation with the Great Barrier Reef overall. Um, and it's just a tremendous place for your clients to really go to and understand a little bit more about the region and the country that they're visiting to and how, how what happens on the reef impacts us all over the world. Um, there's some cool experiences on tour radar, such as including Magnetic Island, or as we would call it, Maggie Island, which is white sand beaches, koalas, like it's quintessential Australia on one island trip, which is pretty cool. And it's also brand new home to the Museum of Underwater Art. So if you have scuba divers or even avid snorkelers, this will be a collection of, I think, six exhibits. There's three currently running underwater. Um, right from Townsville and the, the intent of the museum is to draw attention to climate change and what we're doing as a country, you know, and globally uh, to combat that. So it's a really special experience. 
And then I know we're so short on time, but last but not least, I wanted to reference tropical North Queensland. You might be familiar with this region as gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, certainly so much to do in this region. So not only is the Great Barrier Reef experiences, but you can go river drift snorkeling in the rainforest. You can visit lava, lava tube caves. You can see indigenous artwork. There's lots of different reef experiences for all kinds of travelers and all kinds of combinations. Um, and then that's also home to the Daintree National Park and rainforest. So you're getting that beautiful reef rainforest combo um, with a trip to tropical North Queensland. Many of the tours I referenced take you all the way up the coast from Brisbane up to Cairns. So certainly take a look. And if you have any questions about the right tour or the right location for your clients, um, just let us know. And with that, I'll hand back to Caitlin. Perfect. Okay, uh, so I know we're short on time, but I just quickly want to show you guys since now, thank you Luke and Laura for showing us all the reasons why we need to get on a plane right now and go to Queensland. Um, I know I want to, and I want to send all of our customers there. So um, as Laura and Luke were mentioning, you can find a lot of amazing Queensland tours on Tour Radar. So if you aren't already a registered travel agent uh, with Tour Radar, you can visit tourradar.com slash agents. Uh, and this is where you can find all the information on how to register and uh, how to log in from here as well. Um, we are having a, a promotion right now where we are upping the commission to up to 12% until the rest until the end of the year. Um, so with a lot of Black Friday deals coming up and just a lot of people wanting to book for next year, uh, it's definitely a great time to book uh, your clients through Tour Radar. I also wanted to point out, so everyone attending this webinar is going to be entered into the draw to win an amazing spot on one of these amazing trips with AAT Kings. Um, but also we do have some other webinars coming up as well. I won't go into detail right now about how to use the portal and stuff like that, but you can join one of these upcoming webinars that will go more in depth into that if you have specific questions about how to use Tour Radar. Um, I will just quickly show you the Tour Radar platform. So this is what the agent portal does look like. So when you are registered with Tour Radar, you'll have access to this portal and this will be your hub for all of your bookings. So this is where you can find all the information um, and this is where you can start searching for your tours. So if I go to tourradar.com, for those of you guys that aren't maybe as familiar with Tour Radar, um, we are a marketplace that has we work with over 2,500 different operators, over 50,000 different tours. So really you can find everything and anything here for your customers. Um, but now, of course, after listening to Luke and Laura, we all want to go to Queensland. Um, so if I just use the filter at the top, I can go Queensland, I wanna go tomorrow, but let's plan for next year. Uh, I can pick the dates and that's just adding more filters. And here, this is where I can start to see the different tours uh, that are offered by our different operators. And I just want to showcase this one by AAT Kings because this is the trip that you guys are now all entered um, to uh, hopefully win. There will be a lucky winner um, from our Black Friday contest. But this is a Wonders of Australia. So really highlighting uh, Queensland and it's just an amazing trip. But here on our tour pages, you can find all the information. What's very cool about Tour Radar is when you are asking a question, uh, you're actually talking back and forth with the operator. So in this case, it's run by AAT Kings. So if you ask a question, you're talking directly with AAT Kings. So there's no one better, as you guys know, than talking directly with uh, the operator to help answer those questions. So you can get those questions answered uh, for your passengers. Um, but yeah, I know we are short on time, so I don't want to dive uh, too deep into it. But if you have any questions uh, about Tour Radar or how to use it, you can always email agents at tourradar.com. Uh, and as I mentioned, please sign up for one of our uh, future webinars if you want to learn a little bit more about the intricacies of our dashboard and how to book uh, tours on here. I know we do have a couple of questions, uh, so I wanted to dive into those. So Luke and Laura, if you are ready, I got some questions lined up for you. Um, First one is when Let's is the best time? Yeah, when's the best time to visit? Laura, I will. I'd be 
again, Queensland being a big state. Um, so I will say my favourite times are what we would consider a shoulder season. So that's almost like July through October, which is Australian winter. But thankfully, as Luke showed us, Queensland's beautiful and warm all year round. It's also when you'll hit whale season and it's that pre-Christmas period. Um, we do find that so many travellers for Australia though are going when they go. And the great thing about qu putting a, a Queensland portion of the itinerary is they will get that warm, sunny experience that they expect out of an Australian vacation, even if they head to the south from there and it gets a little cooler. Perfect. Um, oh, next oh, sorry, I do see that one also had a question about best time to see animals. We yeah. have a really cool um, uh, wildlife calendar on our trade website, so we can share that with everybody to see what times of year um, the different animal migrations and things occur. Uh, perfect. I know, Laura, you talked about it at the beginning, but can you repeat the different gateways from the US and Canada? Yep, so we have four times weekly from Vancouver on Air Canada, three times weekly from San Francisco on United, and an 11 times weekly frequently frequency, so daily plus, from Los Angeles on Qantas. Perfect. Um, and I also see a question here about can clients see all the tours on Tour Radar as well? Uh, yeah, so they can go to uh, Tour Radar and they can see all of the tours. If you are logged in as a travel agent uh, and you send, you can actually send them a link to Tour Radar and it, the tour page will have your logo on it if you've updated it in the dashboard. Um, and then we always will then push them back to be booking with you. So you don't have to worry about them going then booking directly with us. If you've sent them a link to when you're signed in to the tour page, we'll always say when they're ready to book, if they're trying to book uh, to go back to their travel agent. Uh, but again, I definitely um, encourage everyone to join one of the future webinars where we go a little bit more in depth into those type of questions. Um, and then I'd say we can take probably one more question here. Um, and you, it's, um, yeah. I'll Sorry, Caitlin, I was just wondering, I'm seeing a question about the health of the reef. Do you mind if we yeah. touch on that really quickly? That was, that was gonna be the last question I was gonna take, cool. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I wanted to touch on this because certainly at the beginning of the year, particularly in the US, this made news, um, the Great Barrier Reef um, and the bleaching event. So in December, 2021, there was a, what we'd broadly call a bleaching event that occurred on the Great Barrier Reef. It's when um, the water temperatures rise, rise, it can be as little as one degree um, that changes things. And it, and it imbalances the ecosystem of the reef. At that point, there was an aerial survey done. They uh, surveyed over 700 reefs that comprise the Great Barrier Reef. And the number that was put into the press and the and the inquiries that we were getting were all quoting 91% of the reef has been bleached. Now, just to clarify, what this study actually showed is over 600 reefs, so a, a significant portion did experience some bleaching. The degree of to which that occurred is different in every single part. It's not to say this is not a concern. It's like a significant issue, not only for Australia, but globally with rising sea temperatures. However, when your clients go out to the Great Barrier Reef, they will still see beautiful, vibrant corals. They will still see Nemo's. They will still see all the creatures um, that they expect to see. But the best thing you can do is to kind of help the reef is send your clients. Because the minute that you experience that part of the world, um, and see how important the reef is to the overall global system, the more everybody is committed to doing all of our pieces to preserve it. So guaranteed your clients will go out and they will still see beautiful corals um, in all the locations they travel to, but it certainly is more than ever an amazing opportunity to open people's eyes to, um, to what we need to do collectively. And watch the Zac Efron documentary, honestly, it's really good. Um, there's also a question here, are there tours, are there tours for reef uh, preservation that you know about? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there is an amazing, so a lot of the tour operators on the Great Barrier Reef work with what we call a citizen science program. Um, so it's, it's a, just that, it's regular citizens that can go in and contribute to scientific programs. So one amazing one is 
called Passions of Paradise. It's a sailboat catamaran experience on the reef. It's based out of Cairns, Port Douglas. Um, and it's a marine biologist for a day, essentially. So either scuba diving or snorkeling, your clients can go out and they can count, count fish, plant corals. Like they can do all of these things to give back in their own way. You'll also find there's some dive trips on Tour Radar. All of those partners work with Citizen Science um, and all contribute and all do their bit to coral conservation. So that's a really cool question. Thank you. Awesome. So I know we're over time. So thank you guys all for sticking around with us uh, and listening to Luke and Laura. And I know I'm sitting in Toronto with snow outside my window. So it's not a better, like, it couldn't be a better time just to talk about beach and getting me on a plane. Uh, that's for sure. So good luck to all of you guys um, with the giveaway. So again, it's a uh, trip from AED Kings to Queensland. So you guys get to experience all this cool stuff. Um, that there is to go and see. Um, if we didn't get your question, then we will definitely follow up and answer any questions that are outstanding. Um, but a big thank you uh, to Luke and Laura for sharing all this amazing information with us. Um, and yeah, if you haven't yet checked out Tour Radar, we have amazing Black Friday deals coming up uh, and a lot for Queensland. So yeah, let's all have a great day and thanks again. Thanks guys. So much, guys.